Town. Cut up your five-day fork. Yes. It's serious. These yes. things are out there. Problems kids deal with every day, alone. Sex. Their stories may be hard for us to hear, Guns. but for those who lived them, they were even harder yes. to tell. Life stories, families in crisis. Dale. Dale King. It was eight years ago today that he committed suicide, and I can't forget it. Him, my best friend. Sometimes I get furious when I think of the man Dale might have become, if, if only I had done something. And certain events still stick out in my mind, like the kids at school coming up to me after Dale's death and saying, why, Robert? And didn't you know? Inside my heart, I was screaming, I'm sorry, God, I'm so sorry. But I didn't have any answers. But now it's time for me to talk about Dale and the events that led up to his death. Dale and I had a connection. It was there from the get-go. We were seniors in high school, and we were unstoppable. To be with Dale was like being inside a good rock and roll tune, the same kind of adrenaline rush. Robert, turn! Here, here. yeah, here. here. Turn here. Wait, didn't the sign back here say a private road? Yeah, well, we're going privately. By ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure this is the right road? Keep driving. I've done this a million times. You guys, where are we going? <laughs> Kidnapping is a federal offense, you know. I'm telling you, this beach is totally cool and totally private. Yeah. We're gonna get kicked out. You're with Dale King, ladies. Relax. This is new. This wasn't here before. Well, it's here now. I can't believe they put up a gate. Gate? What gate? Dale, what are you doing? I don't see any gate. Oh, my Do God! Do you see a gate? I don't believe this. We are all going to end up in jail. Come on! What are you waiting for? You are crazy, man. And you love it, dude. The beach is open! <laughs> Woo! Sure, Dale was impulsive, and some saw it as recklessness, and it did turn into that sometimes. But he helped me overcome stuff, a kind of uptightness I had in the way I saw things, something Dale said I got from my father. We had so many talks on how we'd make our millions after college, and Dale would get really psyched at how in sync we were. But sometimes, he would drift off from our conversation without warning, like he was being pulled away. You ever wish you could walk straight ahead until you get to the end of the horizon? Like straight off into infinity or something. Honestly? No. <laughs> That's what I like about you, man. I mean, you're really deep. You're a really deep person. Gross! You guys, it's really late. I gotta finish my essay tonight. We can't go yet. Here we are at our own private beach, and we haven't even gone in the water. I'm so sure. Like, I really want to freeze to death. If you were going to bite the big one, would you rather freeze to death or go up in a ball of flames? Is this another deep question? Definitely freeze to death. I mean, fire would be so grotesque. You weenies can do what you want. I'm going in the water. Oh, uh, come on, Dale. Not today. Dale, we got to go. I want to touch the horizon. Oh, come on, man, you're gonna ruin my sweater! I got today his to borrow my sweater. Your friend is out of his mind. I thought he was your friend. I've never seen him before in my life. Robert, what's he doing? Touching the horizon, I guess. No, no, I don't see him. Dale! Dale!
Dale lived with his grandmother in a second floor apartment in what he called a cat knick-knack hell. This one night, I remember Dale had planned a big party at his place, forgetting it was his grandmother's mahjong night. Oh, gross. Come on, dude. How long has this been here? Dale charmed these four blue-haired ladies into dropping their game and joining in with us. Dance away your ailments, he said. Cool. You see, he never got a no from Grandma Betty. His freedom was open-ended. And if he wanted to dance in her living room till dawn, like that night, he did. Yes! We always hung out at my house. Dale never talked much about his family. And the only thing I knew about them is that his father split when he was a kid and died when he was 15. And his mother had been hospitalized most of his life. Time for dinner. Dale, are you staying? Sure. Thanks, Mrs. B. With my family, he played the part, putting a wild Dale aside. I used to call him Peter Poe Lightness. It's a really solid liberal arts school. It has a beautiful campus, and it's supposed to look really good on your resume. It's like the next best thing to Ivy League. You've really done your research. Yeah, we're really excited about going. Yeah, let's just hope we both get accepted. It's beyond me why you boys are so determined to go to college back east. We have two or three of the best schools in the country right here. It's just not the same, Dad. It would be nice to have you close to home. Look, I've lived here all my life. I want to try something different. You can live in the dorm, Robert. I can get you into my old frat house if you want. You don't have to go 3,000 miles away just to spread your wings. The point is, it's a really good school. I think it'd be a great experience. Well, let's see if you get accepted. We'll talk about it then. Think of it this way, Robert. You know, the closer you are to home, the easier it'll be to hit your dad up for cash. Right, Dr. B? <laughs> <laughs> How does your grandmother feel about your applying to a college in the East? We uh, haven't really discussed it. This is a really delicious dinner, Mrs. B. I have an idea. How about I stay here with you guys, and Robert can go live in the dorm by himself? Yes! Oh, very funny. <laughs> we had a special place in the hills, and the path to that place was made by our footsteps. And it's where we blew our first smoke, chugged our first brews, and all that. But it really was the place where, Jesus, how do I say this without sounding too cornball? OK, it was where we felt soothed by the wind and just connected to everything. This one time, Dale came up to me with, hey, bro, you hear about NDEs? And wham, he's off describing people who've had near-death experiences, how they see this golden light and then come back to tell about it. Dale was fascinated with the unexplained. And the more mysterious, the deeper he'd wonder about it. Hello? Goodbye, dude. Hey, what's up? Okay, goodbye. Wait, it's almost midnight, man. Where are you going? I'm nothing it. I wanted to say goodbye to my best buddy. Dale, this isn't funny. I just swallowed a bunch of pills. Jesus, what kind of pills? Uh, aspirin, I guess, with a lot of whiskey. Is your grandmother home? No. Okay, listen, don't move, all right? I'm coming over. Okay, just, just don't move. Come on, come on, 
We gotta flush it all out. Come on. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Get away from me, man. Get away from me. Just let me die, okay? Just let me die. I wanna die. Okay, just let me die, okay? I wanna die. Die. Come on. Just leave me alone. Let me go. Just leave me alone. Let me go, please. Fine. Go ahead and die. What's supposed to happen to me if you die? What about me? What am I supposed to do? Who am I going to go to college with? Who am I going to make my first million with? Damn it, you can't do this to me. <laughs> You're cutting off my circulation, man. I don't know, man. It's like I keep everybody way out here, you know? I don't let them in, really. And I don't know. It's like when I do that, I feel like I'm trapped inside myself, you know? It's like I can be in a room full of people. I feel like I'm more by myself than if I'm by myself. I just get so lonely. Get it, man. This doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. I feel that way sometimes. Like, a lot. Everybody does. It's like there's all this pressure, you know? I gotta get into a good school, and I gotta, I gotta be smart and successful. And I gotta be strong, you know? I gotta look good. I can't screw up. I can't screw up. Dale, come on, lighten up, man. College is gonna be great. We're gonna room together. Maybe we'll get, a, get into a frat together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's not that easy for me, Robert. You know, I don't got your grades. I don't got your money. I'm never gonna get to college. I'm never gonna get a scholarship. If I did, I'd probably drop out my first semester. I'm just a big, fat joke. Oh, come on. Get up. Come on, man, up. Look at yourself. Look, look at yourself. Even with puke on your shirt, you're the coolest guy I know. <laughs> Please. I'm serious. Yesterday, Allison told me that, like, half her friends are dying to jump your bones. You're so full of it. Your eyes are turning brown. Okay, as far as college goes, your study habits are pretty pathetic. But you get good grades anyway. You remember the geography final? <laughs> I hate your guts, man. You have a photographic memory. Yeah, I had to go on Jeopardy. You never give yourself credit for anything. What about the tennis team? Dale, come on, you're the only guy on the team who's never been to tennis camp or had a lesson. I gotta take a leak, do you mind? Maybe if you just... I don't know, maybe if you just tried being happy, maybe you would be. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Bite me. <laughs> Where's your grandma? Vegas. It's supposed to be back tomorrow. Hey, um... You gotta promise me that you're never gonna try this sort of thing again. I promise. I promise. Listen to me. Listen, Dale. Listen to me. I'm serious. I'm not leaving until you promise me and you have to really mean it. I promise. Listen, man. I don't know what I was thinking. I, it's like I was possessed or something, all right? I mean, I don't know. You were right, man. But I'm cool now. I promise.
Okay. Okay. Robert. And nothing happened tonight, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, nothing happened. I mean, you're not gonna... I mean, if you ever told anyone... I won't tell anyone. Because my grandma finds out, man. No, don't worry. I won't ever tell anyone. I promise. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Man, after that night, I was scared. Jesus, it's frightening to meet your best friend's demons and then to swear in the name of friendship it never happened. But because I didn't want to betray his confidence, I went along with him foolishly. I kept his secret. It was a fork in the road, and I chose. Do you have any idea what time it is? <sighs> Mom, I'm sorry. Dale's car broke down. He called me because he needed my jumper cables to restart his battery. Well, why didn't he call the auto club? Why didn't he call his grandmother? She's out of town. I would have called you guys, but I thought for sure you'd be asleep. I'm really sorry. What happened to your face? Oh, I must have scraped it when I was recharging the battery. It was dark. Did you get into some kind of a fight or something? <sighs> no. Look, I'm fine. OK, everything's all right. OK. Good night. Good night. Months went by with plenty of good time distractions. And then one night after a yearbook meeting, I saw Dale on the tennis court alone, driving ball after ball with this intensity. And he says, you can't follow the ball and think about anything else. And then whack, whack. After that, I started noticing changes. He was ditching classes, he was drinking more. And we'd be at end of the year parties and you'd turn around and he was gone. He would just disappear. Hey, whenever you're ready. Shouldn't we wait for everyone to get here? Let's do it before it starts raining again. We're all here. And what about Dale? Dale King? He's not coming. Are you sure? I talked to him. I'm sure he'll be here. You a friend of his? Yeah. Well, you tell him I want his locker cleared out. He hasn't been to practice in three weeks. He missed a big tournament on Monday. As far as I'm concerned, he's off the team. So let's take the picture. Come on, guys. I remember feeling so confused. Like, what's he trying to do? And why isn't he telling me? Uh, on, on three, guys. One, two... Time to punch. We've been looking all over for you. Robert, I got my letter. I got accepted. Come on, man. Oh, get oh, in. We're going to celebrate. Oh, 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 oh. Woo! Poor baby, were you scared? No, I would just like to live long enough to go to college. Dale, why don't you let me drive? Oh, come on, man. I wasn't even going that fast. You are such an ass, Dale. Either I drive or I'm walking home. Hey, nobody drives my car but me. Dale, you're drunk. Give her the keys. Was little Robbie scared of the big, fast car? I said give her the keys. Are you coming? I'll call you later. Tomorrow. Bye. What the hell's wrong with you? 
Nothing's wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Why didn't you tell me about the tennis team? What's to tell? The coach said you ditched the team. So? So I thought making the team was a really big deal to you. Look, Dale, I don't know what's going on with you, but the way you've been acting lately, maybe, maybe you ought to... What? Maybe you ought to talk to somebody. Don't be mad. It's not just me. Everybody really thinks you've changed. I thought you were my friend. I am your friend. Right. I made a decision right then that I had to do something, because this secret was burning inside me. I went to his grandmother, hoping she was picking up on his changes and could help me pull him back to himself. Betty. Robert! What a nice surprise. Is Dale with you? No, I'm here by myself. Oh, I never see him anymore. He's always running to this or that. I can't keep up with him. Um, look, you want to sit down? You want a piece of pie? No, thanks. Um, Lunchbox? I want to talk to you about Dale. Julio! Telephono! He just thinks the world of you, Robert. He's told me so many times. Oh, mm-hmm. Now, out of 20. Look, about Dale. Oh, he can be quite a handful sometimes. I'm just so glad that you're his friend. You're a good boy. You know, you're a really good influence. Whew. Look, the thing is, lately I've been kind of concerned about Dale. Oh, me too. He's so thin. Have you noticed? I mean, skin and bones. I don't think he's eating enough, and that's not like Dale. Well, look, talk to him for me, will you, sweetheart? He doesn't listen to me. Betty. Did you know Dale won his tennis tournament yesterday? Were you there? He called to tell me about it. He sounded so happy. <laughs> yesterday? Look, honey, it's crazy today. It was great seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. I was taking baby steps, being too damn careful because I remember thinking, what if I'm wrong? But then I started hearing the horror stories about Dale's antics and Allison trying to stop him from drinking and him flipping out, then pouring booze all over her head and fighting anybody who tried to stop him. I was losing him. God, I felt helpless. Dale, it's Robert again. Call me. Hey, college man. Hi. Let's go. I'm driving. Um, you better go without me, and I'll try to meet up with you later. What's the matter? I can't find Dale. I've called his house about a million times. I went over there. His car's gone. Who cares? He's probably out getting high. You got your letter. We're supposed to be celebrating. I think maybe Dale got his letter, too, only maybe he didn't get accepted. Robert, Dale is a big boy. He can take care of himself. Everybody is waiting for us. Are you coming or not? I can't. I'm sorry. I wasn't jumping ship on my blood brother yet, even though I was ready to do a number on him. And then on my fifth time checking our spot, there he was, like he'd been there all along. Hey, Bannett. Hey. Hey, how's my buddy, Bannett? Hey, dude. Howdy. Hey, you want to go grab a burger or something? Everybody's down at Rockets. Have you checked your mail today? What for? Publisher's Clearinghouse? No, man, I got my letter. I'm in. I'm sure you got in, too. Let's go check. Come on, man, Becca and Allison are waiting for us. <laughs> Allison hates my guts, man. She does not. She's just pissed at you right now. It's a girl thing, Dale. She'll get over it. Let's go check and see if you got your acceptance letter. I'm not gonna get any acceptance letters. Why do you have to be so negative all the time? What do you want from me, man? I want you to start acting like a normal person and stop pulling this crap on me all the time. Look, I'm not gonna get accepted to college, okay? I'm not going. The whole thing sucks anyway. It's just a big joke. Damn it, Dale, why are you doing this? I didn't send any applications. What are you talking about? I didn't apply anywhere. You told me you sent them in. It, yeah, I know. I lied. So what? Life sucks, then you die. It's better this way. Now you can go join your father's frat, go to medical school, and make everybody proud. 
You goddamn liar! You stupid goddamn liar! Go ahead, hit me. You know you want to, hit me. What are you waiting for? Hit me! I don't need this. I don't care what you do anymore. Okay, I don't care at all. Good, I don't care anymore either. Come on, Bandit, let's go. Bandit, I said come on! Go on, Bandit, go. Go home. Robert, have you seen Dale today? No, I don't care if I do either. I found this bag in my locker. It's got a bunch of stuff in it, cassettes and stuff that he borrowed from me. This note was in it. Please don't tell... When did he leave this? I don't know. I just found it. I kept telling myself that he was out speeding through one of his adventures and he'd be back. I was saying it so much, it sounded like a prayer. It was over a week later, about eight in the morning. I'll never forget it, when I heard my mother scream from downstairs. I ran down, my heart racing, and she told me they just reported finding Dale's body in his car at the bottom of a canyon. By the time I got there, his car had been towed away. All noise seemed to stop. I couldn't hear. This unbearable silence was all around me. The one thing that still haunts me about his suicide is I remember getting to the top of the hill and there were skid marks where Dale's car went over the side. Like at the last second, he tried, he tried to stop. My name is Robert Beer. The film you just saw is based on my experience with my best friend, Dale. Although it's been many years since his death, I still think about him every day. I know now that Dale was severely depressed. His recklessness, his drinking and drug use, his sudden weight loss and personality changes were all signs of his illness. You can't talk a depressed person into being happy. They need professional treatment. I know his suicide wasn't my fault, but I'll always feel bad that I didn't know the best way to get help for him. Almost all people who kill themselves talk about it first. So if you have a friend like Dale, please tell someone. Thanks for listening. <laughs>